The process of making buns begins with dough. To make it, McDonald's uses flour, water, liquid yeast, and salt. Then the sponge is sent to a fermentation room for about four hours. After that, the dough goes down the chute and gets mixed with other ingredients, for example, sugar and salt. But don't worry, of course, buns are not the most dietary product, but they still contain less than 5% sugar. At the next stage, a huge machine twists the dough, after which the conveyor shapes it into small balls. Then these balls are given a light dusting of flour and put into special baking pans. Then the balls have to stay there for 55 minutes at a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and a humidity of 90%. So what else is left? Of course, sesame seeds. The buns are passed through a machine that applies an even coating of those. And then the buns are sent into a huge oven for 8 to 9 minutes at a temperature of 465 degrees Fahrenheit. After the buns are thoroughly baked, they're left on a special spiral cooler. where they cool down for about 27 minutes. After that, they also have to be checked by specialists who inspect them, and only then send them for slicing and packaging. In the restaurants, employees will brown them in a special oven. Meanwhile, the process of making beef patties at McDonald's is incredibly simple. The beef arrives to the processing plant in special sealed trucks. The meat is checked for its freshness and various bacteria. After that, lean and fat are mixed together and ground in a huge meat grinder. That way, they get 100% real beef, like the ones you could buy at any grocery store. The main secret of their beef patties is that as soon as a special device gives them shape, they immediately go into a giant freezer, where they stay for 24 minutes. After that, they're packed and sent to the restaurants. Just think about these figures. One such factory can produce about 3 million patties a day. In the restaurants, they're cooked on a double-sided hot plate until they reach an internal temperature of at least 155 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to grow high-quality lettuce, the land on farms is regularly checked. After harvesting, the vegetables are sent to the factory, where they're thoroughly washed and disinfected. Next, experts check the harvest for freshness and throw away any damaged leaves. After that, the lettuce is sliced or chopped, depending on how it needs to be served at the restaurants. And here are the famous pickles we love so much in any burger.
the basis of the Heinz ketchup recipe remains unchanged, namely tomatoes, sugar, salt, spices, and vinegar. The tomatoes for the ketchup are grown on special farms where producers use only selected seeds. It is important for the future sauce that the tomatoes have a large amount of pulp and a low moisture content so that there would be no need to add starch to the product. Then, spices are added to the tomato paste, which are made from herbs, hot peppers, and vegetables. The exact recipe is a closely guarded secret, and the only known ingredient is celery. After that, the resulting mass is loaded into a mixing container, and vinegar, sugar, and salt are added to it. Then the ketchup goes through a pasteurization stage, after which it's put in a homogenizer, a device that grinds all the components, creating a homogenous, thick mass. After that, the ketchup must be cooled quickly. This process, as well as pasteurization, is necessary for long-term storage of the product. Of course, you can't make a burger without a good slice of cheese. Check out how they make them. The path of the fish fillets to the restaurants begins in the sea. First, fish are caught with nets in large numbers. After that, they're sent to the factory to be washed and sorted. They're delivered to the next factory in the form of large fish blocks. A special machine saws each block into 150 portions, after which, moving further along the conveyor belt, they're covered with a layer of batter. After that, the fish has to be frozen, and a huge chamber manages that in just eight minutes. And of course, the manufacturers don't want to offer you a bad product, so they conduct a frying test on several portions that helps to make sure the fish fillet has a good taste, smell, and color. The fries begin their journey on farms. Potatoes are grown there with an optimal number of sunny days. After harvesting, the potatoes are put into a huge potato peeler. The principle of its operation is very similar to that of a washing machine, but there is an abrasive inner surface in the drum. After that, the potatoes are sent further along the belt and thoroughly washed. Then each potato passes through a series of blades that cuts it into the fries we know. It's important to note that at that moment, the potatoes can move at a speed of up to 37 miles per hour. You know that potatoes often have dark spots, right? To remove them, laser and optical scanners are used, which automatically detect defects and remove the imperfections with a stream of compressed air. Then, the potato slices are dried on giant baking sheets. At about the same time, specialists conduct the last quality check, after which they freeze and pack the potatoes.
All that's left to do then is for the potatoes to get to the restaurant where they'll be deep fried in oil with a high content of oleic acid. What about Coca-Cola, which is considered to be the most popular drink of McDonald's? The beverage production process begins with a multi-system of purification that water goes through. Then, a mixture of sugar syrup and concentrate is added to the purified water. The liquid then goes into a special machine where it's mixed and saturated with carbon dioxide. Then, the finished drink is put into bottles that pass through a filled bottle inspection system that checks the height of the liquid and ensures the cap is placed properly. If the system discovers something wrong, it simply knocks the defective bottle off the conveyor belt. Then, they put labels on the bottles and another machine prints the date, time of bottling, as well as the expiration date of the drink. The process begins with whole chickens. The employees separate the breast feet for the McNuggets. After that, the meat is sent to the blending room, where it's ground up by a blender. At this stage, seasonings such as celery and black pepper are added to the mix, as well as a bit of chicken skin for flavor and as a binder. But those are not our favorite nuggets yet. The resulting mixture is sent to a special forming machine that portions the blended chicken into four different shapes. The ball, the bell, the boot, and the bow tie. Then, the shapes are covered with a light batter and a thicker batter called tempura. After that, they are par-fried so that the batter stays in place. If you break the nuggets in half at this stage, you will find raw blended chicken inside. The thing is, they'll be fully cooked in the restaurant so that they stay fresh. So, after being par-fried, the semi-finished nuggets are frozen and packed in a special room, where they wait for their shipment to a McDonald's restaurant.